Well, I'm going to try to tie this into uh, a recent essay you published uh, on your website. The title of that is Art in the Void. And I think discussing anarchism and, and anarchists in particular, I think I think this maybe fits into the metaphor or analogy that you use in this essay about the ice flow of reality. Um, and I mean, in the context of your essay, it's regarding art and creativity and expression and, and our kind of, uh, you actually, I wanted to ask you about this in particular, you, you use a very specific term for the reality that we are collectively engaging in and participating mm-hmm. in. You, you say it would be nice if we had a consensus reality, but we don't, we have a, I think you use a term majoritarian reality. Um, so I would ask, uh, if you could talk about that metaphor you use of us living, uh, of reality being an ice flow. Uh, I think it was a really beautiful and very elegant way to describe this. Um, and if you could describe maybe the difference between, uh, what you think consensus reality is versus majoritarian reality. Oh, interesting. I, I hadn't actually, you know, it's funny because I wasn't thinking about anarchism specifically when I was writing that, but of course it, it bleeds into it because, you know, that, that is a framework by which I see the world. Um, so I present this metaphor in the, in that, that essay you mentioned, Art in the Void, uh, that reality is something that we collectively create. The ideas of what constitute social norms, uh, all, all kinds of things. And I, I, it's possible down to the actual like sort of quantum physics level, but I don't want to specifically <laughs> bet on that. But there's a lot of things that are clearly social constructs that have real impacts upon our life. Like obviously gender is the one that gets talked about the most right now. What is and isn't a, a man or a woman or a non-binary person or whatever. These are socially constructed and they've been different in different societies with different impacts on people's lived realities in different cultures throughout time. Like the current framework of transness that I I largely fit within as a trans woman looked entirely different in say medieval England where the best research I can find says that I would have been called a a badling. Um, I would have been one of the baden. Badling? Yeah, B-A-E-D-L-I-N-G, badling. Someone who is a man who pretends to be a woman, essentially. Pretends? Yet, is that the key word, pretends? I don't, that? you know, I don't know. I have a hard time finding it because it actually seems like, legally speaking, we were a third gender. Mm. Unfortunately, because we were criminalized. But because there, in the laws about badlings, it says, if a badling has sex with a man, it's one crime. If a badling has sex with a woman, it's a different crime. And if a badling has sex with another badling... It's a third, it's, you know, third category. <laughs> okay. No, so it wasn't, no sex it wasn't, for the badlings. Yeah. 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 And, and I kind of, I, I like to believe that if there, if there was a badling culture, it probably built up in the fact that there wasn't really that much central government going on in a lot of parts of um, dark ages. Sure. In Europe, sure. Um, or England in particular, as we're talking about this. So probably badlings were running around doing their own thing perfectly fine. And then at some point, someone wrote down a law saying that we couldn't anymore. But it was a different concept than modern transness because presumably hormones weren't available. I don't know whether people attempted DIY surgery or, you know, or anything like that. And then if you look throughout history and including in a lot of modern cultures, there's all kinds of third and multiple genders that map really roughly to modern transness but it's a a western concept to assume that the the modern western concept of transness applies to all of these people like like i am not um uh i'm not two spirit which is a a conception that is um shared by a large portion of indigenous populations of north america that represents other ideas of gender but because that's not my culture i i am not that and it is a different thing than being a trans woman so i guess but to to make a more a more obvious comparison about um social construction europe and asia are different continents and i remember as a kid looking at a map and being like that doesn't make any sense and 
Because what is a continent, this ostensibly objective scientific framework by which we divide the world, is socially constructed. And eventually you even realize that like the differentiation between species is blurry. And the differentiation between you know, they're, they're constantly changing what, you know, kingdom and phylum and, and whatever those categorizations shift because it's not as neat of a tree as is presented. Um, and that is not to say that we shouldn't make classifications to divide the world up, but it's to say that those are our projections onto people or onto um, species. You know, and you look at a forest and you can say that tree is its own life form, but is it? You know, at what point... Is it the same life form as all of these things it's interdependent with? And to what degree are we as individuals our own people? And and that is the kind of reality that I believe we socially construct. So <laughs> to get to the <laughs> metaphor of the ice flow, sorry. No, you're um, good. Is basically I imagine that we're all standing on an ice flow that is our reality. And the places where the ice is just thickest is where people have reinforced the ideas. And the places where ice is thinner is where you have fringe cultures and you have ideas that are not as commonly accepted. And a role as an artist is to figure out which parts of reality to reinforce. You know, if you make a cop propaganda show, you're putting the ice under a fairly thick part of the ice flow of reality. Um, whereas if you are an anarchist and express anarchist ideas, it's a much thinner part of that ice flow, but it's not a completely separate ice flow necessarily. It's not a completely separate reality. Um, there's just, it's different places on this reality. And the reason I, I use an ice flow instead of like a raft or something is that I believe that there's also the sea of possibility that surrounds us. And some artists will reinforce existing ideas. And I think that's really worth doing if those ideas are worth reinforcing, even mainstream ideas, often worth reinforcing. And some people will kind of reinforce fringe ideas, and then other people will essentially dive into the ocean and find new ideas. And they'll either come back and add new ice and extend the, the ice flow, or they won't. And maybe they'll be happy out on their own little ice flow separate and maybe they won't be. Um, but I, I, I use, so this ice flow is essentially the majoritarian reality and other people use these terms and I, 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 I should do more research in how other people use these terms. But I used to believe that we had this sort of consensus reality that everyone more or less understands how the world works and what is and isn't real. And there's kind of exceptions who are a little bit outside of that through neurodivergence or very different experiences. But overall, we've created one concept. And now I use the word majoritarian reality because I realize instead that there's a, a social pressure to force people to conform to the majoritarian versions of reality and that a lot of tension comes from when people express fundamental differences in, in reality. I think a huge part of the right versus left fight right now, I mean, us trans people are at the center of it, whether we want to be or not. I certainly don't want to be, I'd rather be at the center of it for anarchism than for transness. But whether or not I exist as a trans woman I don't fit within one version of reality and I do fit within a different version of reality. And so the people who don't believe that I'm a woman want me to fit within what they believe is a majority of what constitutes reality, which is that there's only, you know, there's pee -pees and vaginas or whatever. And, um, <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's funny because science, um, tells us that that's not true. Uh, both social science and biological science, right. you know, right. but it, they have a constituted framework that they have fit their entire worldview. And, you know, maybe instead of reality, you could say worldview. I don't, I don't have a, a strong attachment to what word people use. Um, 
I mean, partly because I, I think that we should be more flexible in our our worldview should accept more differing worldviews in general, but maybe not the ones that don't want people to exist because they. Oh well, this is always the catch of pluralism. This ties back into it. It's the the anarchists in Ukraine who formed an anarchist society during the Russian Revolution gave free speech to the Bolsheviks and the Bolsheviks were able to have their newspapers and things like that. And then the Bolsheviks invaded them, even though they were ostensibly military allies against, you know, because the revolution was still ongoing. And and the Bolsheviks are not pluralist and they do not allow anarchists to continue to exist. And so there's always this tension between as someone who is politically pluralist, I don't want everyone to be an anarchist. I just want everyone to let me be an anarchist. Mm, and right. in terms of majoritarian reality, I don't need people to share my conception of gender. I just need people to let me have my conception of gender and let me and mine do what we want to do. So that's majoritarian reality is, is this attempt to force people into a singular conception of what constitutes reality. 